For a brief period in March of 1944, the greatest force facing off against the Americans in Italy during World War II was not that of the Axis powers, but rather that of Mother Nature herself. As Mount Vesuvius roared to life in the middle of the Allied push through Southern Europe, a New York Times writer described the volcano as sounding, quote, exactly like artillery fire. And against two nearby American airfields, it would prove even more devastating than the Luftwaffe. In October of 1943, Naples fell to the Allies, and the nearby ancient city of Pompeii attracted many curious American soldiers who wanted to see the town famously buried by lava in 79 AD. Towering over the area was Mount Vesuvius, the only active volcano in mainland Western Europe to have erupted in 100 years. At the base of the mountain, soldiers are said to have marveled at sightings of lava and at the experience of drinking coffee brewed by lowering an urn into the lava crust. While Vesuvius continued to exhibit intermittent signs of activity, these signs had failed to manifest into a full-blown eruption since 1906 in any way other than small spurts. The local villagers were convinced it was safe to stay in the area, and the enthralled soldiers saw their residences as evidence that nothing could go wrong. The proximity to Salerno, Naples, and the Mediterranean Sea made it an attractive spot for military units to set up camp. The only reported disturbances came from pilots who complained about minor turbulence due to thermal heat rising from the crater. The red lava posed a threat by revealing the presence of Allied forces to German reconnaissance pilots during Allied blackout procedures. Still, these inconveniences seemed a small price to pay for remaining in a beautiful part of Italy. The smaller of the two main airfields installed in the vicinity of Mount Vesuvius was Vesuvius Airfield. It was built as a temporary airfield meant to resist all weather but not natural disasters. The 12th Engineer Command used a graded earth compacted surface called PHS along with asphalt jute to make a grid used for parking areas. Temporary tents were set up for support facilities and living spaces. An access road was added to the existing infrastructure and a dump was dug for supplies, ammo and gasoline drums. A rudimentary electrical grid was installed, and drinkable water was made available. Once the pop-up airbase was completed, it hosted tactical light bombers belonging to the 12th Air Force 47th Bombardment Group, with the first members arriving at the airfield on January 10, 1944. The majority of the planes stationed at the field were Douglas A-20 Havoc medium bomber planes. The aircraft, widely used in World War II by the United States Army Air Forces, was also produced for other Allied forces, including the UK, France, and the Soviet Union. During their run, a total of 7,478 of these planes were produced. Just one mile away from Vesuvius Airfield was Pompeii Airfield, at the base of Mount Vesuvius. It was built using the same techniques as those employed for the Vesuvius Airfield, and it hosted the 12th Air Force 340th Bombardment Group, along with all of their B-25 Mitchell medium bombers. The 340th arrived at Pompeii on January 2, 1944, and the headquarters staff was installed in a villa just three miles from the flight line. While the group's squadrons were aware of the volcano's violent past, they regarded it as something from history books, not something that could come back to haunt them. The 340th Bombardment Group, known in military groups as the Avengers, had begun their involvement in the war the previous year, bombing the supply lines of the Africa Corps in southeastern Tunisia. That mission gained them a distinguished unit citation. Before traveling to Pompeii, they'd been stationed at Foggia, in a muddy makeshift base. They were led shortly after the relocation by Lieutenant Colonel Charles D. Jones, who rose to command on January 8, 1944. He was reportedly a rigorous commander that nevertheless had the respect and appreciation of his team due to his personality. Things started getting rocky for the group on May 10th, when Jones was flying over the coast towards Rome when enemy aircraft fire took down his B-25. All crew members were able to parachute to the ground, but not to safety. 
Lieutenant Colonel Jones was taken in as a prisoner of war by the Germans. Colonel Willis F. Chapman took his place as commanding officer of the bombardment group. With low morale from the loss of their commander, the members witnessed as Vesuvius became disquieted the following week. The crater began sending up steam and smoke every day with small lava spouts ejecting at night. The more worrisome sign came in the form of a mile-long lava flow that erupted in the direction of Naples. Yet Chapman decided that they should stay in place to avoid losing their position and to continue attacking Luftwaffe and nightly scouts. The 340th Bombardment Group continued to fly B-25s around the area and attacking enemy positions until March 20th, when Mount Vesuvius reportedly roared thunderously. Mount Vesuvius rests on the Gulf of Naples in Campania, just 5.6 miles to the east of Naples. It's the only active volcano of the Campian volcanic arc, and one of the few active volcanoes in Italy. The summit of the conical Vesuvius has a caldera formed after the collapse of an earlier and considerably taller volcanic structure. Its most famous eruption in AD 79 completely obliterated the cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Oplantis, and Stabiae, depleting their populations but preserving Pompeii and Herculaneum for posterity. That explosion ejected stones, ash, and gases up to 21 miles and released 100,000 times more thermal energy than the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After that eruption, the volcano has ejected lava or other heated materials on multiple occasions. Its plenty and eruptions are prone to be violent and deadly, marked by the ejection of columns of debris and gases into the stratosphere with lava, volcanic rock, and gas showering those below. A short eruption can begin and end in a day or less, but an eruptive event of the Plinian type can last anywhere from several days to several months. The lava flows and other ejections can be so massive that they can deplete the magma chambers in these types of volcanoes. Such an eruption can cause a collapse in the formation of a caldera, which has already happened to Vesuvius at least once. The only warning signs are the loud noises that generally accompany such eruptions. Still, these can also serve as false panic alarms that eventually become ignored by people accustomed to them. Eruptions can even cause lightning strikes as the electrical charges accumulate in the air due to the rapid and sudden ascension of volcanic ash. Vesuvius continues to be regarded as one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, if not the one with the most potential for devastation. Three million people live close enough to it to be gravely affected by a major eruption and 600,000 people reside in the danger zone. It's the most densely inhabited active volcanic region in the world. On March 18, 1944, Vesuvius erupted. One of the members of a bombardment squadron, Dana Craig, described the start of the natural disaster as recorded by the War Wings Art website, quote, on the day prior, Vesuvius was belching smoke. It was an overcast sky with a threat of rain. About midnight, I went out of my billet to answer the call of nature. While outside, in a mild drizzle, I was hit on the head by what I thought was a small rock. Suspecting some kind of joke, I went inside for a flashlight. When I returned, the light revealed a layer of damp cinders on the ground. We knew at that time that Vesuvius was erupting. We began to feel the earth shake as though a bomb had gone off. Going into the night on March 17th, the mountain appeared to have winded down thanks to minor ejections, but by 2 a.m. it had started throwing rocks out. By March 22nd, Vesuvius was violently spewing ash and projectile rocks. Lightning came into the mix as the gases gathered rapidly above the airfields. Larger, more dangerous lava flows spouted from the top. Yet the commanding officer to the villa headquarters gave the order to stay calm and to keep the plane as well protected as possible. After several contradictions and second guesses from command, the airfield was evacuated. The eruptions were described as beautiful, and plenty of photographic records of the event exist. Once the explosions ended, lava flows trickled down Mount Vesuvius to claim the plains and halt any recovery attempts. The event lasted the course of five days, from March 18th to March 23rd. The lava, hot ash, and volcanic rock took all the B-25 Mitchell bombers used by the 340th Bombardment Group. Around 88 aircraft were lost to Vesuvius. The U.S. lost more aircraft than they did to recent Luftwaffe attacks. Fortunately, all military personnel stayed safe, 
with only a broken nose and arm reported as injuries. The intense eruption eradicated three villages, San Sebastiano al Vesuvio, Massa di Soma, and Ottaviano. It also affected a part of San Giorgio a Cremano. The 47th Bombardment Group reportedly did better at evacuating their airfield, mostly dismantling it and abandoning it in time. Whatever was left behind is now hidden by a combination of debris and the expansion of the suburb into the area it used to occupy. All the installations at Pompeii Airfield suffered, and its old main runway is now covered in vegetation. The 340th Bombardment Group did their best not to lose hope in light of Mother Nature seemingly turning against them. After the Pompeii and Vesuvius airfields were swallowed by hot lava, the Germans could not resist the temptation of using the natural disaster for propaganda purposes. American broadcaster Mildred Elizabeth Gillers, under the employment of the Third Reich, and going by the nickname Axis Sally, broadcasted pro-German messages in English to promote German interests and demoralize Americans. After the 1944 explosion at Mount Vesuvius, she proclaimed on Reich's Rundfunkgesellschaft public radio, quote, We got the colonel. Vesuvius got the rest. Four days after the evacuation of the 340th Bombardment Group from Pompeii Airfield, they borrowed six B-25 planes for each of their squadrons, followed soon by new B-25 models that returned the group to its former conditions. From the recovered aircraft parts, 14 planes were rebuilt. The 340th Bombardment Group continued to attack Germany to the end of the war, pushing aside the memory of their melted airbase. Base. 